All right, guys. Well, the project for the day is going to be Atlas Shaper tool holders. And we're just going to run a couple of prototypes here today. I'll probably throw them on the website, but um, this is kind of what we're duplicating here. This is standard for the 7-inch Shaper. This is for the Atlas. Now, this is a Armstrong, and I've been going to do a set of these, and I've had material laying around here for these for, for a little bit that I've gathered up. Um, I did a little flea bay edition that I've got in on the computer. I've partially edited now, and I'll probably kick it out before I do this. But right after that, why well, I'll throw this one out there. There's a couple on there, and they're for the pieces of crap that they are. They're way out of price, so way out of sight. So I'm going to do these. I'm going to do them very much like I did the internal tool holders that I've already done and they've already been fairly popular off the website. I've sold a few of those and I think there's a couple more up there now. So if you're interested, why go check them out on the website. These are going to be a little more money just because uh, there's a little bit more involved with them and um, I'm probably going to make modifications as I go along to these depending on how many guys want them and how popular they are and how much we refine them but these are this first couple are going to be quick and dirty ones just like the other tool holders I think they're going to work fine so I've already got a little bit of materials cut and I'm going to go do a little bit of lathe work on the on this portion of them on the holders here and I've got stock cut for for blanks now I vary just a little bit off of these just because of the material that I had available and basically there's three parts to this or there is three parts to this we've got the body and I've already got shanks cut when I was doing uh, the second run of of the internal tool holders why I turned I cut some extra shanks so I've already got them we saw how I did those in the first one so I'm not going to go back and show those again I'm going to go ahead and do my lathe work on here I'm not going to show that because this is virtually the same as what we did on the internal tool holders there are a couple of variations to them they're going to have a 5 8 bore through them and the first operation is going to be set them up drill them ream them we're going to face them off drill them and ream them just like we did the last one these are going to be 5 8 internal dimension it's not critical because we're going to fit the diameter of this body to match them so that's all there is and then the only other part of them is a flange nut that goes on there um, i will we're just going to use a commercial flange nut now over the years these are not hardened so i'm using you know this this doesn't appear to be hard at all um, and it's showing some wear and tear on the threads this is this has been well used and abused before i even got it but it's still perfectly functional so for the home use that that we're gonna our hobby use that we're gonna use these for in our little home shops and in our garages these are gonna hold up just fine so drill and ream this like i say five eighths and i've got a five eighths reamer here it was a used reamer it's probably been sharpened so it may be a little bit undersized not going to make any difference the only other difference is the relief in the bottom for the flange nut and uh, i believe what did i check with a the caliper these are these are about 815 8 812 815 diameter and then just the thickness and it looks like these may have been turned down a little bit but uh, all we're going to do is cut a recess to accept that in the bottom of them. There again, not a critical dimension. It just tightens up the, the dimensions a little bit. So that's what I'm going to go do. Then we'll come back and we'll lay out for this portion. And I've already got a piece of stock cut for that. And I've got enough for two of them here. And first operations on these is going to be to uh, do the layout. Then we're going to drill them for our tool bits. And... I was going to, I had a couple of fancy little ideas of how I was going to cut the square hole for the quarter inch tool bit uh, to go in there. And as I looked through the things that I've got to, to be able to make that square hole at this point in time, I don't have a good solution for it. So I'm going to go ahead and drill these. I think they're 930 seconds, I believe. And then it's going to be some good old fashioned file work to make that square hole. And we'll get that much of it done and then we'll go from there. So I've got my two heads turned. I've got the lathe work done on those. I've still got some milling work to do. But anyway, that's what they look like. Got both of them here. The differences that I've done on these, and it's only because of the material availability, is this would have been one inch stock like is on the like I put on the internal tool holders. This is actually inch, inch and an eighth. So we've got a sixteenth of an inch all the way around on these. Um, and it's recessed for our flange nut in the bottom 
you know, so they sit like that when they're done. This will uh, go into the index head on the milling machine, and I'm just going to go ahead and cut my cut my little quarter inch grooves in the top of that. This one you can see there, they extend up, you know, and there's uh, four different directions. Anyway, it's got the adjustment all the way around, and they've left these little nubbins up. Now this one's got some that are squished down and stuff over the years. This has just gotten beat up, and there again, this was the way I got this tool, so uh, it works fine. But anyway, we're going to set that up in the middle and do that. Before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, start turning this. And what I'm going to do to start with is I've got my stock here, and I've got enough here to do two of them. We're going to do threads on either end, and, and then our bodies here, and they'll be parted off in the middle, or cut in the middle and faced off. And... Um, this is the way they're going to start out. First thing I'm going to do is take the whole block. I'm going to set it up in uh, just in the milling vise on the uh, mill, and I'm going to go ahead and drill my holes for my that that will be opened up to my square holes on each of those. We'll get that done, and then we'll go to the lathe and turn them. Now the reason I'm going to put those holes in there first is because the square cutouts intersect this top shoulder. So we'll go ahead and drill it first, then we'll turn up and leave that little bit on the shoulder, and then we can dimension off of that, plus we'll already have that. It'd be kind of tough to drill that through right into that shoulder. So just for ease of doing it, that's the way we're gonna do it. Dimensions on this, like I say, originally they were they were all inch, and maybe in later versions I'll take it down to inch. It's just gonna be, it's just gonna depend on how I feel, I guess. But anyway, the, um, the head's three-eighths of an inch thick. The body on this is three-quarters of an inch long. And then the thread length is about three-quarters of an inch. So overall length, we're just under two inches is the way this measured out. Not critical on this setup. There's actually a little more thread sticking out than we need to have. But uh, anyway, it's just simple turning and threading off of that. We're, we're threading uh, three-eighths, sixteen is what they are now 3816 on this is a little bit loose when these were originally turned they may have done something else we may be dealing with wear in the in the nut and on the screw i don't know but irrespective 3816 is the dimensions we're going for there so overall stock length like i say is just under right at two inches just under two inches and that's a little bit too long we don't need quite that much thread length sticking out there but anyway we'll go over to the mill get those holes punched which is just just setting them up in the mill drilling our two holes and then later on we'll turn them into square holes dimension wise on my stock i ended up with a piece about four and a half inches long four inches is final dimensions but four and a half gives me lots of lots of extra material to to fit each individual one um, the way it measures out is I gave a half an inch for our head. Is that right? Half an inch? It's actually only three-eighths of an inch. Um, but we're a full half inch to the center of our hole. That's where I come up with that half inch dimension. So we're going to part it in the center there. Those will be the, our tops, so we'll have room to face those off from so this will be the very top here and this will be the very top on this one to the center of our hole from the top is a half an inch so that's where i came up with that half inch dimension so we're just going to do a half an inch there half an inch into there and these points even though we've measured them out they're basically arbitrary it doesn't uh doesn't matter that much in the big picture of things that should give us a Pretty good indication of where we are. How about if we come down a little bit here? We don't need to be running quite that fast. Maybe a little bit faster than that. How about right there? Halfway. Let's get this back up out of the way. And
should be plenty high enough for us. Actually, let's go to an actual spotting drill here. They're again basically arbitrary. As long as we leave us enough room there. That'll give us a nice spot. And then we're going to open this up with a 930 second. And then we're going to finish it off with a 1964. Why don't we not screw around and go sharpen that drill bit or change it out for another one? Just be right back. All right, we're going to be optimistic and say this nice shiny new one's going to do a little better job. Finish that out with a 1964 just to just to make it a little bit easier. There's the first one. Okay, so that's the standard milling machine work there. Double check our gizzies. Lots of material. Lots of material. So there we are. Um, now I'm just going to go ahead and pull that. I might as well clean up some of this stuff a little bit because we've got to change the rotary table here. And then we'll go to the lathe for this. We'll just deburr this a little bit and set her up in the lathe. We'll go ahead and turn our shoulders and cut our threads, and then we'll file out our square hole there. Well, here's our rotary table. We've already zeroed it out all the way we've got to. Uh, and we're going to do this quick and dirty. Okay, there's zero, zero right there. We're centered out. Let's put it in high range. And runner about there, I think. Um, so I've got everything locked in position. Let's go ahead. Let's see. We're not going to lock table. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go from zero. We'll cut our front back. Then we'll do um, go back to zero, do left, right. Then we'll rotate it 45 degrees and do the same thing on the other ones, and that should be it. So we've already set elevation here. So if we come down to... Let's just do a real light cut and see what we end up with here. Um, see how deep we really want to go and if we want to take it all at once or what we want to do here.
Let me uh, let me grab a quarter inch tool bit and make sure that's going to fit. But I think that's just about right depth wise. Yep, I think that's just right. I think that's what we'll what we'll run with. I think we'll go to that depth right there too, which is sixty thousands. Okay, let's try this again now. I um, re-zeroed everything out, and uh, we're just going to take real light cuts on this. I'm not even gonna gonna screw around with trying to take heavy cuts because otherwise this is not uh, not that rigid a setup. See, one more of those projects that needs to be taken care of. I need to make a dedicated set of dedicated hold downs for this, which will uh, take care of that problem. But one more project to get to. think rather than even running it two ways I think we will just uh, go ahead and rotate our table and just take our time here The uh, originals have a little guide marked right down in the middle. And the only thing I can figure is that's just a little place for crud to accumulate or something or to kind of wipe out of the way. Um, I see no other real reason for that. But let's see what we've got here. We do have a small chamfer mill and I think we'll go ahead and uh, utilize it while we're right here and it'll just take a couple minutes i've got to where even though i've got the air draw bar on here if i'm doing a whole lot of milling i go ahead and um, tighten it down with a wrench just to, just to give it a little extra oomph as we go along here I'm not sure how deep a chamfer i want on that let's see what we can do
Yeah, that'll be plenty right there. Now this could realistically be done probably easier on the CNC mill, but that's uh, not the way a lot of you guys are going to be able to do it if you're building your own. So you know, I modify how I do stuff and I do run quite a bit of parts on the CNC's. But like I say, when we're doing a affordable build to show you guys how to do it, that doesn't, uh, that doesn't help you a whole lot. So hopefully this gives you at least a little bit of a idea of what you can do in your own shop. There's the first head done. The other one I stumbled along with. Well, let's see if I can save that one or if I screwed it up when I when the mill let go. All got to be deburred, of course. But there's the way our uppercuts look. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Do that. Compare that to a factory one. I guess they mine's just a little bit bigger, that inch and an eight stock as opposed to being one inch diameter here. But that will make a nice tool holder. This is all kind of in the wind. We have to uh, let me grab my other part so I've got measurement standards anyway to work off of. And I'm just going to match these to the diameter that I cut inside. It's uh, it's really kind of an arbitrary thing, you know. If I was mass producing these on the on the um, turret lathe or on the CNC, it'd matter. But for one offs or two offs like this, it doesn't make a whole lot of difference. There's uh, our finished part, our our one that we've got. I've still got to cut the other one yet, but we'll do one of these just to just to show you guys how everything goes goes together. And let's see, let's just face off the end here. And then we're just going to start removing material. And I think, let's go ahead and measure this because from the center of our hole approximately we want inch and a half. So yeah, let's just skin off a couple more times and then we'll be the length. That just kind of gives us enough to clean up there. Then we're just going to start pulling material off of here. And the first point we're going to is just uh, just so we don't quite clean up our hole there. We want to leave a little bit to square that up. Otherwise, we're just removing material is all we're going to do. Okay, I think that looks pretty good right there. Yeah, we're about an eighth of an inch long, but we'll shorten that up later, I think. substantial bevel because by the time we um, by the time we thread that then we'll still have to shorten it up because it's going to be too long so here's our pieces it fits on just like that we'll thread this outer portion to uh, 
take our take our um, flange nut and then we can yeah see we're gonna be a good half inch long the one that came off the the original one was long too so we'll shorten that up quite a bit but anyway we want this 3816 and this gets real noisy what we'll do is I'll start threading it on this till I get threads pretty close and then we'll just dye it run a dye down on it oh what do we got here should be a C up and we are there and we are there this is going to be real noisy because uh, the back gears on this are really really worn this whole lathe is really worn which actually brings up the the thing about getting a good finish with your lathe and I've talked about this before I did a video on this and actually had a comment yesterday that a guy was still having trouble um, you know I started off hogging this off with carbide I ended up and went back to high-speed steel you know carbide has this place and I use carbide more and more in the shop and on the on my manual machines too I I use it exclusively on the CNC lathe but the problem with um, carbide is on interrupted cuts why it's gonna it's more prone to chipping out it's more brittle uh, it does not give as good a finish on a worn lathe um, I, I can by far get a better finish on this particular lathe in most instances running high-speed steel um, carbide will do it but you have to diddle around with it a whole lot more and when you're just starting out you're in my opinion you're much better off with high-speed steel you get a, a decent quality high-speed steel learn how to grind them and center them up on your machine and ultimately you're going to be a whole lot happier with uh, with your results and if you start out with carbide because everybody said it's the greatest thing in the world um, I, I think it's got its place I do use it quite a bit but for a lot of things if I want a decent finish and stuff I normally will go back to high-speed steel and that's just the way I, I, I work in particular so your mileage may vary on that but when guys are asking me about it why on the internet everybody's got their opinion but uh, I will always tell you that I prefer high-speed steel Everything looks pretty good there. That should be just about all we need with that. Okay, they used an oddball size thread on this because that's a larger thread than what we've got. But that will sit there let me find a nut here. I don't think I've got a flange nut in stock, but I'll bet we can come up with a, with a standard nut. When I mic'd that out, I felt like it was uh, 
larger than a 3 8 but it wasn't a 7 16 so I think 3 8 will work fine. You could open those up to 7 16 but uh, that'll work fine. I'm going to leave that just like that. I'm not going to shorten it up until after I um, get the proper nut and, and make my square hole. But there's the first half of it done. So now we'll go back and we'll have to file our hole there and we'll have to grab a couple of nuts whether we We'll see if a standard will work, otherwise we'll build customs for it. And we'll bob it off, champ for the top, and uh, got to weld the shank on and we'll be done. All right, well, as I was sitting here edi editing this, I realized that I have, um, I didn't record the last portion of this, mainly because it was just standard turning and standard machining that we'd already been over other than a little bit of hand fitting. So. This is what we ended up with. This is our final final version here. And the way it came out. And the things I didn't show was with this upper portion. This is half of the ones that I did. All I did was actually I parted this one off so we end up with three eighths of an inch thick. A little bit of a bevel. Then I went back and just filed the square hole in it and I just took standard file needle file quarter inch wide uh, roughing file and just squared up that hole which doesn't take too awful long at all until I get a good fit with the with the um, quarter inch tool bit now on the top end now in this particular one I did not make the little the little relief cut down in the bottom um, part of these I did, part of them I didn't, and this particular one doesn't have the relief cut in it yet. Uh, future ones I will put that relief cut in there. Like I say, I don't think it makes a bit of difference. And we can see a little bit of markings where I just touched it up with a file to make sure I had a tool bit that would fit through the hole and lock in position all the way around. The other changes I made is a 3 8 flange nut. Now this is just a three standard 3 8 nut. And they put the little serrations on the bottoms of these to lock, to use them as a lock nut. I just took it to the belt sander and sanded those smooth so that we don't get a, so that it doesn't mark up the bottom of the tool, holes, tool holder and it will, uh, it will lock down there real nice. Um, then I went back, sandblasted them on the bottoms of the holders. Why? The relief that I cut in the original ones of these uh, was too large because the, the nut that they used on my original tool holder was not a standard 3 8 uh, thread. It was uh, something proprietary between 3 8 and 7 16 You could open this up and use a 7 16 flange nut. I played with that a little bit. That nut's awful big to go on here. It's got a big flange. It's awful thick and everything. So I think the, the 3 8 coarse thread is going to be the answer to it. Um, and like I say, there's the way the, the body ends up looking all the way around on them. Then they go to the sandblaster. I sandblasted them off just to give them a nice even finish and um, then oiled them down. So I think it's going to make a real nice tool holder. Um, nothing nothing beyond as far as the welding. I did the, I showed welding when I, I showed the welding on these when we did the, the internal tool holders for cutting keyways. So I'll try and remember to link that uh, up here in the description. And um, or up there in a card and then also in the description down below so if you're interested in that go back and take a look at it and uh, that's the way they end up so I'm very happy with those I've already got a couple of these loaded to the website um, I've got a few more almost done they still have to be sandblasted off and just finished out but otherwise that's what we end up with hopefully you find this a little bit useful comment suggestion guys leave them in the comment section for me below and as always, thanks for taking the time for, to watch.